All right, fellas. We are back with another one. What do we got going on today? Hips rising in the deadlift. <laughs> this is an interesting one. It's one that people, I think it stems from, I, don't, I actually don't know where, like, uh, where it came from. I don't know. I, like, I feel like somebody, there's a popular video out there or somebody, you know, or people just looking at their lifts and they see their hips rising and they start to get self-conscious about it. When almost like the knees coming in when people squat or knees coming in when they squat or elbows, um, you know, moving too much when they do, when they bench or, you know, elbows like being in a weird position when they squat, something like that. Right. And for whatever reason, there are reasons why you don't want your hips to rise too much, but I can kind of explain it a little bit and let you know that like for some people, they're never going to get it perfect. Right. There's always going to be some thing about your lifting where it's just not going to look like super pretty, but that doesn't mean you can't be one of the best. Um, there's so many different ways to get to, you know, your potential. And just because your, you know, popular lifters tend to be very good at a lift. Well, not necessarily, but prominent lifters tend to be very good at a lift. And tend to be gifted with certain qualities that make that lift look a certain way. And for I think because everybody sees those people, they think they need to move that way. Now, there are absolutely people that have a very aesthetically pleasing lift. Um, really good technique. And they're very good at the lift as well. But again, not everybody's going to be able to do that. So you have to kind of find for your body type which a lot of these videos you're seeing, it's like, you got to try it. You got to see what works. Yours is going to be different, whatever. Right. So, you know, let's, let's, let's break it. Let's break it down. Now, if your hips, if your hands are in a good position and your core is locked in and tight, you're reaching down to the bar, right? You're not like bending your biceps when you lift and you have pretty good positioning. Some people just like their feet are in the right place, but they just like to drop their hips when they deadlift, they drop their hips and then their hips rise. And then, you know, they see their hips rising and they go, Oh my God, like, why are my hips rising in the deadlift? I need to fix it. If I'm not mistaken, there's a 900 pound, if not near 900 pound deadlift, it might be like slightly lower. Now that I think about it, um, by a lifter named Kokliev, Russian lifter. He was really good at Olympic weightlifting as well. And he liked to intentionally drop his hips almost like a weightlifter would. Um, cause he was a weightlifter and then he would just deadlift and his hips would shoot up a bunch. He's one of the, he was one of the best ever to do it. Um, conventional. So you know, how can this person with raising hips, um, you know, be so good at the deadlift if the hips are rising? Well, you know, your hips are going to have to get to a certain point or the bar is not going to break the ground, right? Because you have to, you have to lengthen your, you have to extend the quads, you know, extend the hips a little bit enough to get your femurs to a certain angle to really sort of wedge yourself and kind of crank that bar off the ground. If you don't do those things, it's not going to move. Um, and I think as long as you're hitting, as long as you're like tight and your position when you break the ground is uh, optimal in quotations is, is solid, you know, for your body type. Um, and it's giving you like good, you know, mechanical advantage and good, you know, like we're trying to cheat weights, right? We're trying to cheat the amount of weight we can lift. <laughs> but as long as you have a solid 
start position. And I really like to just kind of look at the bar right when it breaks the ground or maybe like literally the millimeter after it breaks the ground. If that position, you know, if you're in that position and you have, uh, I mean, if I had like a picture of a lifter, I could like draw lines and show you what I'm looking for. But, you know, if you're looking at a side profile, you want to make sure that the bar is sort of like right under the armpit. You want to make sure that from the femur to the hip, you got a nice sort of like 45, slightly more than that angle going on. Um, you'll see really good, man, if you can start with your deadlift um, and you're, you're breaking the ground and your femurs are like more than that 45 degrees, right? So you just have like a really, really, really good start position. You're going to be an amazing deadlifter, right? But again, you don't necessarily get to choose that. Short torso, super long arms, sumo, hips close to the bar. You know, if you have those qualities, you're going to be a good deadlift. Also, when you lock out, if your arms don't touch your thighs or barely have any, like maybe just your wrist taps your thighs, but that's it. Man, you're going to be, you're going to be sitting pretty when it comes to the deadlift. But again, a lot of those things, you, you don't get to decide that. Um, now you can put yourself in a position to, um, you know, get close to that as close as you can uh, without like kind of hurting yourself or maybe you don't have the mobility and i think mobility is sort of like you can increase your mobility a little bit but it's not as much as you think especially like on the bench for example um you know you're talking about and i would argue that the more you strength train the more that your joints are going to be less mobile because your body is going to favor stability. Um, and over time, like for example, when you lift, the discs in your back will compress and get shorter. That's going to create less room for you to arch. That's why we don't see people in like their 50s with like a crazy arch, right? It's just, it's just not the same as when they were younger. I'm sure there's like one guy out there that's like that. <clears throat> right? Everybody's different. There will always be someone that breaks the rule or... You know, that's the thing, right? There's always going to be someone who contradict, like their existence is an anomaly, right? How can it be possible? How can they be, you know? It's like when people, it's like when people, um, so let's use, let's use me for example, right? We've done, you know, flex boys, we've done a lot. We've done basically everything that there is to do, you know, broken all kinds of records, competed at the world level, you know, Sheffield, da, 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 all that. So what we're doing is clearly, especially with the variety of people we have operating at that level, I think we have six people doing Sheffield this year, you know, it's got to work, right? There's something about that that is working with a lot, with a large variety of people. So what can it be? It is a formula you know, I'm not just talking about programming. It's a lot of things that go into it um, that is effective, which if someone, for example, let's say somebody else has success doing something different than we're doing, um, varying, eh, let's just say it's like, there's another person that's like at that level and they're like, they don't like the way that we train or they do something different. That's fine. And they, and you know, you can't say that it doesn't work because it's clearly working, um, but there could be other ways of getting to the end goal, right? I just found a way that re that works really well that I like and I can communicate really well. So if somebody else finds that as well, um, you gotta respect it, right? I can't, if someone meets me, like if I go to Worlds and I'm my lifter and there's another lifter that's like neck and neck with us, I gotta respect that because, hey, they might, you know, I, I, I might not even, I might not even know how they train um, or they might train in a way that I just don't like, or maybe it's not a way that I train my people, but I understand why it works and I can see like, yep, yeah, you're hitting, you know, all the right landmarks. You're doing the things that you need to do. Um, you know, it makes sense why you're, why you're progressing. And that is another way of doing it. You know, I mean, there's been many times when like, 
Well, let's, let's roll. Getting too far off topic, but let's just go back to the deadlift. Your hips rising in the deadlift, first off, you can solve it pretty simply. Um, one, and again, it's really hard to tell you if I'm not like looking at the lifter. Like I don't know the person. I don't have them in front of me. <clears throat> but if your starting position, right when you're breaking the ground, um, has you know your femur's at a good angle, and you're if you're in a good safe position, hips are nice and close to the bar, um, and everything is tight and locked in, then it's probably not that big a deal. And like I said, your hips are going to have to rise to a certain point. Now you can adjust your stance width and practice. If you're doing conventional, like obviously, you're not going to. You're like all you could do is like adjust your start position. You're not really moving your feet, right? Because you have like a really small, you know, area to work with. Um, but if you're working with sumo, you could just move your feet to where your hips are going to start in a pretty good position, and you might only have like a little, little, little tiny bit of hip raising, right? And again, to say your hips rising are is a bad thing. I mean, there's some people that when they squat, they're fucking, you know, their hips shoot back, literally flies back out of the hole, but they can have an amazing squat, like a super powerful squat. And if they go any wider um, to try to fix that, or, you know, the, the other way is that they can work on their quads, right? It's very hard to break those habits, um, but they can work on their quads a lot to try to bias them a little bit more which which means when you're searching for strength when your body is searching for ways um to sort of be optimal or like efficient fucking hate the word optimal right efficient um it won't bias the posterior chain so much and, and again for some of us like you're just gonna have big strong glutes and lower back and hams and that's where your body's gonna go towards all the time um, but you can, you know, train in heels for a year and become a hack squat God. And, you know, maybe you might be able to get it to go the other way. But at the end of the day, you should be sort of leaning into your strengths. That's how you get ahead, right? You're already better than somebody else at something. Like you already have, you know, I already have like, let's say you already have like, I don't know, a bench press that biases the chest, the pecs. You want a nice wide grip, right? Then lean into that. Push that even further. Yeah, you want to work on your weaknesses too. But you're already ahead at something. You already are genetically gifted. You already beat. You already like won the battle there. Now now go farther. Now go even farther with that. Right? You. Sorry, I'm walking. It's a really nice day out here in Southern California. We got, we're chilling at like 70 degrees. 70, 72 degrees all week. 74, 68 degrees. Something like that. <clears throat> Favorite time of year is coming up. Going to be outside a lot. Anyway, if you're already better, you're already more genetically gifted at someone um, than, than your opposition, whatever, double down on that. Continue to build that. Get further ahead. Create more distance between you and them. Right? People obsess about their weaknesses so much. And it's like, man, if you would have just put that same effort into your strengths, you'd be so much farther ahead. They wouldn't even be able to touch you. That's another video. Anyway, but yes, you can adjust your feet so that your hip raising is just a tiny bit. Um, it's not the end of the world if your hips raise like a crazy amount, but you could be fucking up your start position if your hips are raising too much. Like you don't want too much inefficient movement you know, when you're breaking the ground. Um, but there are a lot of lifters that do have some hip raise action going on, and it's not that big a deal. They're the best, and their hips raise, and that's just how it is. You're, like I said, your hips have to get to a certain position in order for you to break the bar from the ground and you don't want to obsess over small things like that to the point where you can't even progress now because you're obsessing over little things instead of focusing on the big picture but yeah hips rising in the deadlift might be something you need to fix maybe it is maybe it isn't um definitely helps to have somebody to take a look and you know i'm sure i don't know who does this i used to do it for free back in the day um, I just don't stream anymore. I mean, I might one day, we'll see. But, uh, like, even if you just paid someone, like, if you don't, if you don't have a coach, right, so you can't afford coaching, but if you just paid someone to look at your technique and just help you lock it in, um, like, once, then just go from there. 
like, okay, that's done. Now you don't have to obsess over it. Um, but you have to, I'll say if you don't have a coach, you're going to like, you want to review your notes. You want to remind yourself because I've seen lifters, like you fix their form and it doesn't really become habit for like a couple years, maybe like two, three years. Um, so you got to keep reminding them, um, unless they're just going to keep pulling out their notes. But anyway, it's always good to have someone else's eyes there to observe. Um, yep. If you made it this far, hashtag real one in the comments down below. Four months out from Sheffy, five months out from PA Nats, which will determine the future of powerlifting as we know it. Love you guys. See you in the next one. Peace. Also, don't forget to like.